Hello, I'm Hurricane Specialist Brad Reinhardt from the National Hurricane Center. When a tropical cyclone forms near land, it can reduce the amount of time that you have to prepare for its impacts. Fortunately, we have a strategy at NHC that allows us to issue forecasts and warnings for disturbances that are still developing. You may have heard the term potential tropical cyclone before, but do you know what it means? Let's talk about it. In September 2023, NHC forecasters were carefully monitoring a large non-tropical disturbance off the southeastern United States coast. This system was broad and associated with fronts, certainly not what we would consider a tropical cyclone. However, we expected this system to develop into a tropical cyclone, and its close proximity to land meant it would bring rain, wind, and storm surge impacts to portions of the United States coast soon. But since it did not meet our definition of a tropical cyclone yet, what could we do? A National Weather Service policy change in 2017 gave us the ability to issue potential tropical cyclone advisories. A potential tropical cyclone is a disturbance that is not yet a tropical cyclone, but which poses the threat of bringing tropical storm or hurricane conditions to land areas within 48 hours. Sometimes these disturbances are already producing tropical storm force winds, but lack organization or do not have a closed center. Instead of sacrificing valuable lead time by waiting until the disturbance becomes a tropical cyclone, we can issue our full set of advisory products, including tropical storm, hurricane, and storm surge watches and warnings for near-term land threats before tropical cyclone formation occurs. In this case, we started writing advisories on potential tropical cyclone 16. We issued tropical storm warnings and storm surge watches for coastal portions of the Carolinas and the Mid-Atlantic region. Our key messages focused on the threat of tropical storm conditions, storm surge inundation, and flooding rains for these areas. While we were reasonably confident this system would eventually become a tropical cyclone, what mattered most was providing enough lead time for people to prepare for the expected impacts it would bring to land, regardless of its development. So what ended up happening? Well, over the next 24 hours, the system gradually became better organized and separated from the nearby fronts. Showers and thunderstorms developed near its center, and as expected, tropical storm Ophelia formed offshore of the Carolinas. At the time it formed, Ophelia was already producing tropical storm force winds along the coast of North Carolina. It later made landfalls a strong tropical storm near Emerald Isle, North Carolina, and caused $450 million in damage from storm surge, gusty winds, and heavy rainfall. How does this strategy help you? Well, if you are in the warning area, it provides you with more advanced notice to prepare before the tropical storm force winds begin. Let's look at the lead time for tropical storm warnings that have been issued for the United States with potential tropical cyclone advisories. On average, verified tropical storm warnings that were issued using this approach provided an additional 20 hours of lead time than if potential tropical cyclone advisories had not been used. Prior to the potential tropical cyclone policy change, there would have been no tropical warning lead time for a storm like Ophelia. The National Hurricane Center has used potential tropical cyclone advisories to address some of the challenges that occur when tropical cyclones form near land. This approach helps us to consistently message the hazards and provide sufficient watch and warning lead times to give people time to prepare. Every storm situation is different, but potential tropical cyclone advisories are another useful tool we can use at NHC to help protect life and property. As always, remember to visit hurricanes.gov for the latest forecast information. You can also follow us on Facebook and X. Thanks for watching.